Welcome to Caskets and Cocktails, Memoirs of a Cemetery Dude. Get ready for a hilarious dive into the world of death care where cemetery industry veteran Mr. Danny and his daughter Katie will answer all those crazy questions you've been dying to ask. Go ahead and pour yourself a drink, pull up a rocking chair and get ready for some laughs because we guarantee Caskets and Cocktails will be the last ones to let you down. Hey, Katie and Mr. Danny, Adrian, and Renee, here from the Dear World Love History Podcast. We love listening to Caskets and Cocktails. You guys tell the funniest stories, and it's hard not to laugh out loud obnoxiously while we're at work. Okay, so our question is, has it ever seemed like family members are competing for number one griever in the Who Can Grieve the Most competition? Or is that just our family? We can't wait to hear your answer. Hey guys, Katie Levert here. I'm Danny Faulkner. I'm her daddy. And welcome to Caskets and Cocktails. And today we have a really exciting show. Yeah? Yeah, we have a bunch of good questions. From all over the world. All over the world. Isn't that crazy? That is. That's wild. I can't believe that people are actually listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're from all over the world, they probably don't speak our language. Well, that's true. That's they're true. Going, We're just oh. background noise. Yeah. <laughs> But um, we have a great question from Dear World Love History. It's a podcast. It's a history podcast, clearly, and it's really good. So hang on just a second, and let's take a listen. So that's a really good question. Well, that is a good question. I I, I don't feel like her family is the only one that tries to (laughs) outgrieve. Her family is not the only one, I assure you. (laughs) Everybody tries to uh, uh, show their grief Uh so everybody else knows, oh, well, they must really have loved JoJo or, Uh you know, Mama or Uh whoever. Uh And uh, it's what's even more interesting is not the dynamic in the family, Uh so to speak, but there's a community dynamic Uh as well. And that is, uh, for instance, uh, you've got church members coming into the funeral. Uh You've got neighborhood members coming into a funeral Uh and all of that sort of thing. And those little subgroups Uh all try to outdo themselves. Oh, like... like the your Sunday school class loved you more than your bowling league because exactly. they're wailing and crying exactly. and the bowlers aren't. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, okay. And there's also uh, um I don't know ethnic cultures. Uh-huh. There are um foreign folks in our society now uh-huh. and their cultures are different. Uh-huh. And we've got several cultures uh-huh. that we service. Uh-huh that um, the way they demonstrate <laughs> how much they loved Mama uh-huh. is they'll get up and wail and then pass cold out. You were kidding. Just thump, hit the ground. Stop it, yeah. like from a standing position? Yes, oh, yes, Lord. and they're down. And, uh, Do you what have you... to call an ambulance? No, no, no. Somebody will reach down there and slap them on the face a couple of times, and they'll go, oh, 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 oh okay, I love Barbara. I love oh, Barbara. Oh, my gosh. So what you do is you're standing there, uh-huh. you know, just kind of making sure everything's going good. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, uh, a lady stands up and hoops or hollers or uh-huh. something like that. And then you know she's going down. You are kidding. No. You can just spot them in the crowd. Oh, yeah, you can spot them. And what you do is you take a step aside because you try to catch that big girl and... <laughs> And your back's going to be tore up for six weeks. So you just let her go, you know. Oh, my gosh. And what she'll learn eventually is, you know what? Every time I do that, it hurts. So I'm going to quit doing that. Do you think that they really faint? Like, Oh, yeah. Are they faking it? No, I think they're out. Really? They are out. How can you just, like, make yourself faint? I don't know. I don't know. But they work themselves up into a tizzy. A tizzy. And... And they're not sitting with the family. Uh huh. They're not necessarily family members. Oh. Okay. Family members, the way they mourn more than not is to argue. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, I want mama's piano. Uh huh. 
Uh-huh. Well, no, you can't have Mama's piano. I want Mama's piano. Yeah. Well, I love Mama more than you loved her. That's why I have uh, sticky notes on certain items in your house and my name on them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'll solve the problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah when you look under the dining room table, there's a sticky note that says, When Dead, Return to Katie. <laughs> I don't think your brother cares about the, the dining room oh, seat. maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> But he he wants my guns. Yeah, he, that's what he wants. But uh, no, it's it's weird the way people have to let other people know that I loved uh, Aunt Susie uh-huh. more than you loved Aunt Susie. But more importantly, uh-huh. Aunt Susie loved me more than she loved you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's the competition. Uh-huh. Is uh, who loved. Who more? Yeah. And they'll do that by arguing. Uh Uh-huh. They'll do that by, uh, oh, I've had screaming cuss fights over it. Really? Yes, Lord, yeah. Over who loves the person more? Yeah, Uh uh-huh. She loved me more. She did not love you more. She loved me more. Well, you were in prison for the last 20 years. She didn't love you. (laughs) You know, so uh, it's not just the ladies that called in family Uh that's weird yeah yeah everybody's weird yeah you know when you see except for me except for you yeah (laughs) uh when you see a funeral where nothing abnormal happens Uh uh-huh that's a weird funeral oh really yeah people come in and they you know shake hands and uh go down front and they all sniffle and all that Uh stuff yeah, what kind of funeral is that? You yeah, know? yeah. I they, mean, they were probably really boring. Yeah, they probably they did like word word problems. At <laughs> they just have allergies. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's a sniffle. Yeah, but uh, it's that's the weird one. The, the if you look at the dynamic that's going uh-huh. on, almost every funeral has got some weirdness going yeah. on. If it's not just the intent. Uh, attendees uh-huh. because you'll see folks out of the Appalachian Mountains coming in. You know, they drove 45 minutes in their 63 pickup truck, yeah, uh, to get there. Uh-huh. And then you'll see on the at the same funeral somebody that just drove five minutes in a brand new Cadillac, uh-huh. but they're both there to show their respects, yeah, yeah. The way they show their respects uh-huh. is as different as a 63. Pickup truck yeah. and the brand new Cadillac. Yeah, the way yeah. they're showing their respect, uh-huh. and uh, it's 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 really pitiful uh-huh. when uh, a teenager dies. Oh yeah, that's horrible. And because kids don't know how to grieve. Oh. Grieving is a learned process. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, you learn what to do and what not to yeah. do, and how to dress to a funeral and how yeah. not to dress to a yeah. funeral. And you do that by making mistakes. Right. And kids, when a teenager dies, they tend to wander. They wander around the funeral home aimlessly because they don't know what the hell they're doing uh, there. Yeah. Yeah. You know. They know that they saw little Bobby in science class uh, last Wednesday, and now and now, I, now I'm here. What what do I do? Yeah, yeah. You know, I just know I'm supposed to be here. Right. right. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Right. And uh, there's no coaching that. Right. You know, uh, parents, for whatever reason, think that kids automatically know how to do this. They don't. Yeah. So that's where you see a lot of one-upsmanship. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this little girl in school that really liked Bobby, but uh-huh. she didn't let Bobby know that. Uh-huh. And she wants everybody to know that she loved him and uh-huh. that he loved her. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, all that sort of uh-huh. stuff. So it's, it's all a competition. Huh. It's all a competition, and it starts early. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's really, really weird. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that if 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 that answers the question or not. But it's almost every funeral. It's almost every time we make arrangements for a uh-huh. funeral in the family room. So uh-huh. uh, there's always a little bit of that. Uh, what I call green eyes. Uh-huh. 
come out. That's kind of envious. Yeah. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Well, that is really interesting. I think that answered the question really well. Oh, good. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank yes. You. Well, hang on, guys, and we will be right back with more questions. Dum da da dum. Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet is a comedy podcast featuring brother and sister duo Alex and Christina as they recap dramatic readings of one-star reviews written by real people with not-so-real problems. Whether it's a bar's no-throw-up policy, a barista who's just too friendly, or a school psychologist's fashion sense, prepare for equal amounts of laughter and eye-rolling. Listen to Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, or any of your favorite podcast apps. You can also find them on all social media platforms at Beach Too Sandy. Hey guys, this is the second time I call in, and I'm really sorry, I don't mean to be a pest, but I wanted to let you know that you inspired me to create a podcast. I've wanted to do it for quite some time, and once I heard you guys and heard about Anchor, I realized, hey, I can actually do this. So thank you, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. This is Connie from Not Strictly Disney Podcast. And I do have a question for you. Have you ever had a Disney-themed funeral? Believe it or not, I'm hoping that mine is the first. Okay, so that was a really good question. Yeah, it was. Well, we have another question. It came in off of Instagram. Uh And we just kind of talked about how... um, People, you know, are envious and that emotion. And Anna wants to know, have you ever had a humbling experience? I've had, I've had a lot of humbling experiences <laughs> in my life. Uh, uh, probably one that stands out in my mind uh, that is, I don't know if it's humbling or not, but it certainly does change your ideas of people uh-huh. in that uh, I'm a sales guy. Yeah, yeah. I train salespeople. Uh-huh. And uh, years ago, we lived in Kentucky, and I was training a fella, and it was we had a 5.30 appointment. Uh-huh. So I took him with me to show him how to do this. Right. And selling cemetery property is not easy. No, it is. It's not easy because people don't want it. Right, right. All right. So we pull up in front of this single wide trailer, uh-huh. and the little kids are playing outside. Uh-huh. And uh, we go up and knock on the door. Well, Mama comes to the door and just kind of looks at us. Uh-huh. And you could tell that these folks were living from hand to mouth. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so sh- she invites us in. Well, there was no place to sit. There was clothes and chairs, and they had just gotten through eating, and there was dishes on the table, and uh-huh. so. Uh, I was determined to show this guy that we're going to do a presentation. Uh (laughs) So we're standing up. And Uh so I get out my presentation book. And back then we did what's called flip charts, where we're pictures and you're telling stories about the pictures Uh and all this sort of stuff. Well, we're standing there and I'm getting my flip chart book out. And Daddy comes out of the back of the trailer. Uh And he was a diesel mechanic. Uh And the house kind of smelled like diesel oil, uh-huh. you know? And so I'm just really thinking, well, this is a waste of time. Yeah. But I'm determined. Uh-huh. So I give this presentation. I give a fairly decent presentation, uh-huh. not the greatest, but a fairly decent one. And now daddy doesn't say a word. Uh-huh. And mama doesn't no say a word. No nothing. questions, They're nothing. Just staring at you. Staring at us, not interrupting, listening, I guess, kind of. Yeah. And, uh, Daddy says, well, what do you want to do, Mama? And she says, uh, well, I think we ought to do it. Well, and he, easy sell. <laughs> yeah, I kind of looked at my buddy here, and he says, uh, just a second. He goes back in the back, and he comes out with a little paper sack. And back then, uh-huh. a full package, which is two cemetery properties, two vaults, a marker, mm-hmm. was $3,800. That was yeah. that was the price of a car. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, he reaches in his bag, and he pulls out 38 
$100 bills. Oh, my goodness. And hands it to well, them. Well, that's surprising. And I was shocked. <laughs> and uh, so, fortunately, I brought a receipt book, and I uh-huh. said, well, uh, let me write you a receipt. And he said, uh, you don't need to write me a receipt. He said, I know where you work. Wow. And uh, so I said, okay. And we left, and I turned to my buddy, and I said, see how easy that was? <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, I'm not sure if that's humbling, but it certainly does tell you you can't judge a book by the cover. Yeah, I think that's a great story. I yeah. think that's a good lesson learned, especially for for me, because I think everybody passes judgment sometimes when you first initially meet somebody or whatever. It's just a natural thing. Um, and I, I think that is just an awesome story to share with people. You never know what you to expect. You never know. And two, it was... I guess it was humbling because this guy, I come in wearing coat and tie and all uh-huh. fancied up and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And he reached in a sack, pulled out $3,800. And at the time, I probably didn't have $30 in the bank. I never, right? you know? <laughs> And this character just pulls out $3,800 yeah. bills. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So, and uh, that was back when $100, you could have groceries for two weeks yeah. for $100. Yeah. Wow, that's a great story. I love it. Good. Yeah. I hope that uh, the questioner likes it. Yes, and I hope so too. And thank you for following us on Instagram. Yeah, Yay. thank you. Well, we have another question, uh-huh. and it's from Mouse Connie, and uh-huh. she is a huge Disney fan. Oh. And she wants to know Have you ever had a Disney themed funeral? Because if you haven't, she wants to be the first to like nail this down. <laughs> well, well, what is her name? Mouse Connie. Mouse Connie. Okay. Uh, well, you're too late. Uh, oh, oh, but sorry, Connie. <laughs> And uh, this really gets weird. Uh, okay. In that, uh, you know, we have uh, children that die. Yeah. Uh, either through natural causes or through accidents or whatever. And uh, parents like Disney. Uh, the kid was the Disney princess uh-huh. or something akin to that. And there are Disney caskets. What? Yeah. What? Paul's. Yes. Disney caskets. Yes. Oh, Connie, you're go- I can I can already tell Connie's going to get excited <laughs> about this. Yeah. And what it, what it is, it's the in what's called a cap panel that goes uh-huh. inside the casket and they'll be like Tinkerbell or or a princess or something like that for little girls uh-huh. and uh, there'll be Mickey Mouse and stuff like that for little boys uh-huh. and uh, so I came to work one day and uh, the guys were saying uh, you need to go in Parlor A and check out Parlor A it's it's a Disney themed funeral uh-huh. Uh-huh. and uh I said, okay. So I, I, I go in there, and I'm expecting a child, you know. Right. Uh, well, it's a full-size casket, and I'm thinking, this is odd. <laughs> and I go up, and they had made like, they had like those magnetic decals. Uh-huh. And they had all sorts of Disney characters on the casket, and the cap plate, which is the panel on the inside uh-huh. of the casket, was Mickey Mouse and all this stuff. And the guy, uh-huh. which was a grown man uh-huh. in the casket, had a Mickey Mouse costume on. Stop it. Yes. He had a Mickey Mouse costume on with Mickey Mouse ears that you buy. Stop. I can't even <laughs> handle this story. That is the... That is, what did you do? No I, wonder they told you to go in there and yeah. check it out. And then when I turned around and looked, they were standing at the door laughing at me <laughs> because of my response. You know, I mean, you kind of, you kind of see a kid like that yeah. and you go, you understand yes, it, yes. you know, the, all of that sort of thing. But you see a grown man like that. And this is not like a grown man uh, that special needs or something like that. Right, right, right. This is a guy that's married uh-huh. with kids. Wow. And grandkids. Wow. And uh, he was like a hardcore Disney fan. Oh, they went there all the time. They would go four and five times a year. Yeah. And uh, it took his family there. Uh He saved up his vacation time. And uh, the kids and the grandkids were into it. Yeah. I mean, they were really into it. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, 
It was people just love Disney. Oh, they do. Yeah, they do. And I mean, from birth to death, they yeah. love it. Yeah. And uh, I've seen uh, Marvel comics as well. They make a Marvel oh, really? superhero. Uh, I, pa- pause real quick. Uh, I want to go back to this guy <laughs> dressed up as Mickey Mouse. I can't stop thinking about it. So, uh, did you see the attendees of this funeral? Were they dressed up as well? No, they were not. Okay, so it's no. like they're just dressed normal well, for a funeral. Right. They're- and. Did you watch people's reaction? Were people really surprised by seeing this older grown man dressed up like Mickey Mouse? Well, I think... Or did, was it like, oh yeah, he did that all the time? Well, I think that was more or less the take that I got, was that they knew this character. Uh-huh. And uh, he was evidently, that was him. Wow. That was that was him, you know. And so we, nobody was shocked. Nobody was like, whoa, that's weird, Bob. Yeah. I never knew Bob was that into Disney. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It, 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 but it was, you didn't see a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's like nodding their head uh-huh. in, in agreement with what okay, they had so done. Okay, so nobody was shocked. Nobody had the same reaction you did and no. apparently everyone else you work with. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, nobody did. I mean, evidently that was the, the deal, you know. Like, <laughs> But we've had, we've had Avenger. like Star Wars, yeah. we've had... Uh, uh, all of the superheroes. Uh-huh. I had a little boy that was dressed in a white tuxedo. Oh, you talked about that. Yeah, with the, with all of the superheroes and yeah. all that sort of thing. So it's it's personalizing the last moments on Earth for a person. And if Disney, if Mickey Mouse floats your boat, more power to you. Yeah. I- that yeah I'm like i'm feeling a little judgmental now maybe i need to have a humbling moment because <laughs> i can't stop thinking about it but you're true i mean that's right it's your last mo- it's your last moment she might as well just be you yeah you probably weren't tricking people anyway so. <laughs> <laughs> well you know and that that is the truth about everything yeah. you know be you do you i like it you know? i like it and zero judgment Right. But who cares? And you're dead. You're dead. Yeah, if they're looking at you funny, it's their problem, not yours. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mouse Connie, good news for you, because if you're interested in a Disney-themed funeral, it sounds like there's a lot of stuff you can get for it. There's guys out there that can help you accomplish your task. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, uh, thank you all so much. We are getting so much response on social media, and we really, really appreciate it. It. We're almost at 3,500 follows on Instagram. Wow. That's a ton. That That's is a, a ton. a lot of people. So yeah, it is. We are um, just really thankful for you all. Be sure if you don't follow us to go to Caskets and Cocktails. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Um, also, keep those questions coming. We love getting voicemails. We have a phone number. It's in the show notes. Call us. We want to hear your questions. It's a great show because of you. Exactly. This show wouldn't work without our fans. No, you're right. Yeah, you're right. We, Somebody's got to ask a question in order to get an answer. Yeah. And that's somebody's you. That's right. That's right. We get tons of emails and lots of Instagram DMs and stuff like that. So shoot us a question. We love hearing from you because we'll, we'll be, be the, the last, last ones to, to let, let you down. down. Go to anchor.com. It's free. It's easy. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. You can record and edit. They'll distribute your, your podcast everywhere. You can make money from your podcast. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Hey, we're Renee. And Adrian. And we are the Outlandish Historians. We're sisters, nerds, and lovers of all things history. Except bell bottoms. Keep that in the past. Come hang out with us on the Dear World of History podcast. We will frolic through time as we chat and geek out over the good, the bad, and the downright ugly history of the world. We promise you don't have to be a licensed historian to travel through time with us. Maritime disasters? Check. Historical serial killers? Check. 
glamorous and petty royals? Check and check. You can find us almost anywhere you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter at Dear Historians and Instagram at Outlandish Historians. So chug that drink me bottle and come on down the rabbit hole. It's going to be a wild ride. <laughs>